Okay, so I just wanted to give you a, um, a quick tutorial to recap on the frame model that we've been using in class recently. And just take you through it in case you're still a little bit unsure about how to actually use the frame model and ways that you can use it to suit you. So you can find this template anywhere. You can find this by simply searching for the frame model in Google, bringing it up. I would recommend that you don't cut and paste it into a document, I'd do it into like a slide so that it's easier to write over the top of it, or print it out and write it by hand, that's absolutely fine. So the first thing you want to be doing is writing the name of the word in this middle section here, nice and clearly, nice and big. Um, and then, secondly, you want to be moving on to a definition. What does the word mean? So the easy thing to do here would be just to go onto Google and type in the word and type define. Um, and it will bring it up for you and then you can kind of cut and paste that and stick it in there but that's not really the helpful thing to do because you might find that the definition doesn't actually help you understand what the word means so it's about not just taking the first option um, for your definition you might have to search a little bit further in order to come up with a definition that you understand because that's the important thing it's you understand in the word not how well can you fill in a form so put the definition of the word next you want to be moving on to the characteristics or the facts so that might be looking at ways that you can identify the word itself. If, for example, somebody is superstitious, how do you know that they are superstitious? What are the facts about superstition and being superstitious? You might be putting things like bad luck, belief in good luck, um, unable to prove whether it is a fact or not based on opinions. And I would literally just bullet point those ideas. It doesn't need to be massively detailed in full sentences. So this is where it starts to get a little bit more complicated now and a little bit harder and you need to then start thinking about synthesizing the information that you've been given. So by using your understanding of the definition and the characteristics, you then need to think of an example of that word being used. So in this example section, you might write one or two sentences that include the use of that word that you've been looking at. Okay? It might also be that you use synonyms so synonyms being words that mean the same or have the similar meaning to the word that you're exploring. Okay, so examples of sentences using the word or synonyms for that word or even a combination of them both. Examples of sentences, full sentences that include synonyms of that word to show that you understand the definition and some of the characteristics and facts. The non-examples then becomes even more complicated, but a really powerful tool because it allows you to think about what the word isn't. So not only are you saying what the word is, you're saying what the word isn't. So that might be, again, examples of sentences whereby the word has perhaps been used incorrectly to show that that's not how you use that word. It might be examples of people, things, situations that aren't that word. So for again, if we were thinking about superstition, what isn't superstitious, okay? And use a sentence about something that isn't a superstition, okay? You might also then go for antonyms, the opposite of meaning of the words. So by looking at the opposite meaning, you can start to understand that actually superstition is not this. People might think it is that, but it's not. These are examples of what it is not. Okay, so you'll notice with the examples and the non-examples, there are a few different ways that you can actually approach it. So just to give you um, a, a clear example of a word that we've already looked at in the past, so we're already pretty familiar with the uh, meaning of that word, look at marginalised. Marginalised is an adjective that describes a person as insignificant or on the periphery of, or edge of something. So characteristic or facts about that word, you're looking out for things like if someone or something is being outcast by society or if they're ignored by others or being thought of as being inferior, they could be considered to be marginalised. Examples of, of situations where marginalisation is being shown, we've got Curly's wife is marginalised by the men on the ranch, she's not included, she's not allowed to be with them, she's not allowed to spend time with them, she's ostracised, she's on the edge of their group. Um, another example to do with women that we've been looking at during the early 20th century, uh, century women were often marginalised by men. Um, Non-examples, we're thinking about the character of Slim. Slim's quite an integral character, he's, he's, he's very much so included, he's considered the prince of the ranch. So he's an accepted member, he is not marginalised. He's a non-example of marginalised. And if you feel part of a team, 
that isn't marginalised, that's the opposite. Okay, so I could add to this, I could put some um, examples of synonyms, what other words mean the same as marginalised, I've already talked about a couple there, um, such as ostracised on the periphery. Um, and non-examples, we might add some antonyms here as well, having the opposite meaning, included, for example, might be one of them. So, do you know of any other variations of the frame model that you think might be useful or helpful to try? You might want to just do a quick search on uh, YouTube or on Google and see what other variations, what other templates maybe there are out there to help you explore words in a slightly different way. Get smart, find different ways to develop your vocabulary bank, ways that work for you.